you weren't supposed to be where you are now. You weren't supposed to reach this point. You were not supposed to get this far. It has come to the point where not only can these people not look you in the eye, but even worse than that for them, they cannot look each other in the eye. You see, the Bible says, surely they will gather. They come at you one way, but they will scatter seven ways. They always have to team up. They always have to group up. There is a legion of them. That's why they were sure that their plan to come up against you, to slander your name, to defame your character and your reputation would work. Because they were coming at you one way, many of them. But it failed. I had a dream recently. I wasn't led to show it until now. Of many bees, very large bees, about as big as the hole that I am making there with my hand. Many of them came up against me and were a swarm of them and were hovering in the air before me. And I could even see through their demeanour, because they didn't have facial expressions or anything like that, but I could sense in the dream that they wanted to harm me. But it was as if there was an invisible barrier between them and myself. And I didn't run, I just looked at them. I didn't feel fear in the dream, I just looked at them. And they were all hovering in front of me. And now, looking back in my mind's eye, they were dark. There was no orange or yellow on them. They were just dark, buzzing angrily in front of me. But they did not attack. But I knew they wanted to. I knew when I woke up that this was the enemy. And literally the hive that they come from, the hive mind. So they are all coming from at you one way. They are all coming at me one way. And I feel led to share it now because I believe that this is, it was a dream that was for the, for all of us, for the body, not just for myself. But what they see as their strength in numbers is their weakness because they are of a hive mind. I knew that that was what the Lord was telling me, that they're thinking one way, they are of a hive mind, one way. And we know that Satan is an imitator and that's why he hates God because he's not creative like the Lord. He is not a creator like our God. He cannot create. And he wishes to imitate the Holy Spirit. And I knew that in this dream, they were of one mind coming up against me, the hive mind, from a hive, a demonic hive, a demonic place. But that hive mind is no match for the mind of Christ. And this is why yet again, the Lord is asking me to serve him by encouraging you, by encouraging us. Don't be fooled by your natural eyes, I will say it again, because again, they come at you one way, but they will scatter seven, and they are. They cannot even look each other in the eye. They can't stand to feel the shame. So not only can they not look you in the eye, which is why they feel this need to eliminate you, but they cannot look each other in the eye because... It's all well and good putting on an act for people when they don't know who you really are and what you're made of. But each of them know what the other carries. And when they look at each other, they are reminded of what it is they have done and what it is they are doing. They're reminded that it is all an act. It is all an act and they are not who they purport to be. And it's all very well when only you know that when you are someone that doesn't believe in God and you think it's just yourself and you're not aware or you don't care that there is a God that is watching and that knows the truth. You're willing to take that gamble that there is no God. But it's another when the physical presence of your colleague 
or your family member or your friend is near and you know that they know, then you really do have to act. That's what these people don't like. They are feeling the shame of what they've done. When one is talking to the person that is oblivious and the other is present and they're singing their own praises and beating their own drum, talking about how much they believe in truth and rights and justice and protecting others. They know that that person knows. That's why they want to eliminate you because you are reminding them every day of what it is they have done wrong. And rather than come into the light and confess their sins and remove themselves of that burden, they just want to forget about it. They want to take the chance on not ever having to be held accountable, not ever taking, having to take the responsibility for what they have done. And removing you from the situation will enable them to pretend. It will enable them to put that shame into the closet. The sense of shame that comes from their conscience is God gently encouraging them to confess their sins, to turn back from their wicked ways, but they refuse. Let me tell you what your enemy is suffering right now, that the Lord thank you Jesus, showed me this morning very clearly. We always think of God as the mighty thunderous voice, but God from his scripture he has shown us and through Jesus, the character of Jesus, who is the very likeness of God, who is God, we know that God is found in the still, he's found in the quiet, he's found in the whispering wind. And it is the same with what he is teaching those that are refusing to yield to him. You see, that hive mind that thinks or thought it was superior to you, they believe you will be assimilated, but the Lord is the one who is ensuring that they will be assimilated. They are going to have to admit their wrongs, whether now or later. And believe me, my friend, it is better for them that they do it now. That's why you continue to pray for them because you are not like them. You wish for their plans to be crushed, their evil, their evil plans, but not them. We don't wish that on anyone. You are not like them, are you? No. That's why you pray that they just leave you alone. You don't wake up thinking about how to harm someone and how to do evil, how to affect your plan so that it succeeds, your plan to come up against another and destroy their life. And you don't go to bed and lay on your bed, as it says in scripture, plotting the same. You don't do that. They will be assimilated. And this is how God does it. People don't realise, but slowly but surely, the evil that they have done is, is what the Lord showed me, is, not will, is working on them. Those that refuse to repent, it's working on them in this way. They're be becoming fatigued more, whereas once they were energetic, they are not as driven as they once were. The things that moved them positively don't move them anymore. They're not finding respite or relief in the things that they sought respite and relief in anymore not even their addictions which have grown worse you see the bible tells us there is no rest for the wicked and that is not just later my friend that is not just later because god is loving not wanting anyone to perish but for everyone to come to repentance so what do you think just as he works on you the father corrects the one that he loves he is also allowing satan to mete out his wrath upon them because he wants them to come to turn to him. He wants them to realise where all the wickedness that is slowly and insidiously entering their lives, their very beings. They no longer smile or laugh the way they used to. 
They no longer find joy in even the grace that God has given to them, in their children, in their hobbies. Their entire lives are being destroyed because they want to wanted to destroy your entire life. You see, that which a man sows, he reaps. Human, so woman, female, male, doesn't make a difference. I believe the crux of this message is God is asking for you to be strong because he is pulling back, but not from us, but he is. Thank you, Jesus. God's given me the image of a bird in a nest or a child when they're learning to ride a bike. Eventually you're going to let go, even if they're not aware. I taught my little sister how to ride a bike when she was little. And I'll never forget when I... The stabilizers were off her bike and I kept holding her as she was riding. And I'll never forget when I let go and she rode to the end of the garden. She didn't realise until she got to the end and the joy on her face when she realised she did it all on her own and that I wasn't helping her it was wonderful. And that's what God is doing. That's what God is doing to us. So it seems like he doesn't care. He's letting go and he's letting us, but he's watching all the time. I would have never let my sister fall. I was still near. She, I knew she wouldn't. I knew she wouldn't have let go if my father was there as well. I knew that she wouldn't, but I was the one. He was watching. He was observing. He was letting us bond in that way. I knew that she was safe and that she could do it. She just needed to know it herself. That's what God is doing with us. Like the birds in the nest, the mother, she doesn't push out her young from that nest until she knows they can fly. There's no other way they're going to find out that they can fly until she nudges them out of the nest. And then it's, they have to. It's a bit like that saying, sink or swim. So I'm sorry. I have the kitten here going nuts. <laughs> it's the same with her. We had her in a little cage. She was so young. She was so young when we got her just the other day. And now she's growing. She's big. We have to let her move around. Let her discover what she can and what she can't do. So... God wants you to be encouraged. He's still present with you. He's not speaking as much as he was. He's not answering you when you ask him, not because he's deliberately ignoring you, but because he wants you to trust that he's already told you and that things have not changed. Nothing has changed. It's exactly what he told you when he was speaking, when you were loving it because he was speaking to you every moment you you felt the presence of God. You could see him in the signs. You asked him for a sign and he'd give you one. You'd ask him to encourage you and he would. You'd ask him for confirmation and he was. He's still here. He's still present and he's still doing that. And he's so loving. He knows that, he knows that when you worry, because even a word like this can help. And he's doing the same for me. Wall and saying, but I am no, I'm not superior to you in any way. We can all speak to God and hear him. He just wants us to encourage one another and build one another up. As it says in the section on this channel where it describes what this channel is about. I hope this word has helped you. God bless you and keep you. And as I always stay, say, stay in the vine. The vine is God. He is the vine. We are the branches. Apart from him, we can do nothing. Don't become conceited. Don't become arrogant at the fact that the Lord loves you. Because he loves everyone. And he said that the my disciples are those that do the will of my father. So make sure that is the case. <laughs> and certainly his will is that we trust him and that we love others. And when that is hard, then just ask that you not be offended. Ask that you don't become bitter. Ask the Lord to just help you at least be neutral and to just block certain things. Have, them, have him remove them from you if you cannot. Do totally as he asks. All the best.